now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Live from Harlem in New York, it's the Ramble with me, I'm Alex Bennett, and we're here until midnight tonight on the East Coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, a man who's always available at a moment's notice, <laughs> I'm amazed exactly. at how fast you can do these things, you know? I'm, you know, I'm out in the desert, man. I got nothing better to do. It's either too cold or too hot. Ch Chuck Farnham, ladies and gentlemen. Is it too cold or too hot where you are now? Today, it looks like it's too cold. It's about 25. 25? Yeah. Wow, it's right now here in New York, it's 33 degrees. Uh -huh. And if people were listening to this, that was probably two weeks ago. <laughs> right, right. It was a long time ago, and the weather has changed by then. Hmm. So anyway, um, um, you were asking about my COVID. What did you want to know about my COVID? Well, no, and I, I, I heard the other day that you had it again. Yeah, third time. And third time. I, I've had it twice. Isn't isn't and that the, isn't three times the charm? Don't they say that? Yeah, it's annoying. It's yeah. become annoying. Well, you know what it is. I don't know how I got it. I you know I've I've told the story on the air recently. I don't know how I got it because I never leave the house. I really right. never leave. Uh, and the only place I had been previous to coming down with it was my urologist office. I'm not blaming him, but what a better place to get COVID than a doctor's office. Right. You know? And um, I think I might have gotten it there. But man, it must, it's supposedly, it's supposedly the new strain is running rampant. And if you've been, I was, I was inoculated, I was vaccinated, so I was only having a real bad cold, you know. But uh, Did it keep you in, keep you in bed. Uh, yeah. Then I went to the. Uh, I, it was a weekend that it was happening, so I didn't go to my doctor. Couldn't go to my doctor. Plus, then he wouldn't probably be able to see me for two weeks or something like that. Anyway, I. Um, what was it? I uh, uh, went to a uh, ur urgent care place. Urgent care. You know, City MD, I think it's called. And they right. did the whole thing, and they checked me out, and then they tested me as I had tested myself and said, yeah, you got COVID. So they said, you want Paxlovid? I said, yes, absolutely. So they gave me Paxlovid. They didn't know to give me the non- Old guy version? The, the, there's a version that's for non- it's a non-kidney version or something, you know. Yeah. If you have slight kidney problems, you shouldn't take it. So, but I knew that, so I just did away with one of the pills. But I took the course, and you know, the next day I was like a hundred percent better. You know. Wow. But how did I get it the third time? I mean, what am I doing wrong? I'm not going out. I'm not dealing with human beings, and supposedly it's right now during the. In the dead of winter, it's really out there. It's rampant again. Yeah. I was in a little itty-bitty town in northern uh, Nevada yesterday, and I mean small. Yeah. Look up Urington sometime. And they had signs all over town in business windows and uh, like uh, road signs that said, be vigilant, COVID. And... They were taking it very seriously there. Well, I think what happened was we became a little too loosey-goosey about this, you know? We became a little too egotistical. Oh, we've got a vaccine. That takes care of it. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It, it takes... Everybody went back to licking on doorknobs and stuff. Well, like no, that. the thing is that, no, you're not going to get it terribly. You're not going to go to uh, have a hospital visit if you've been vaccinated. But you're going to get it nonetheless, and you're going to spread it to other people if you don't take care of it, you know. So uh, it was, uh, you know, once again, COVID. I'm going, how did I get it three times? Oh, during the, you know, during the whole COVID scare, original one, I never got it. It was only after yeah, I, I didn't was, either. 
it was only after I was vaccinated that I got it. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't touching when it first happened. My doctor said, dude, with your lungs, you get this thing, you're done. Your lungs will not handle this. And so I didn't go anywhere. I didn't touch doorknobs. I was spraying antiseptic on mail. I was everything. Oh. We, we, we would get Amazon packages, and we have this foyer, yeah. right? So we would put on our masks, and then we would spray them with disinfectant, the packages, and then let them sit there for three days. Yep, same thing. You know. Now, I, I think maybe that was overkill, but now that I think about it, it probably wasn't, because at that time, yeah, you know, it was a real problem. So, it was bad, yeah. and, and, it was, and we couldn't tell who was going to die when they got it. Right, right. So I mean, you could you could die the whole thing, and and uh, I didn't want to get it. Uh, once we got the uh, the vaccination, we we got two of them, you know, because there were two vaccinations. Right. You know, the two in a month or whatever. In the original course, once I got the second one, I breathed a sigh of relief. You know, at least I wasn't going to die from this thing. Right. You know, uh, by the way, if if uh, if you're monitoring this uh, YouTube, um, you see what they do is they once they tried to give me a, I don't know, a timeout or something, whatever it was, because yeah. because I was passing wrong information about COVID. Well, oh, yeah. Yeah. What happened was is somebody on the show mentioned what somebody else had said. And how terrible it was because it was misinformation. They took that as me supplying misinformation going. because their algorithm caught it or something like that. So right. YouTube, if you're listening, fuck you. I've had it three times. I'm an expert. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we are. Between the two of us, we've had it five times. Yeah. We we know what we're talking about here. Yeah. Yeah. We're 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 really uh, an isolation ward right here on the air. Right. We're yeah. veterans, veterans of COVID. Yeah. Dot com. Yeah. So anyway, that was my that's my COVID. Uh, I I'm sure the audience is tired of hearing about my COVID. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, you know. But three times, I'm is, an expert. It is happening. I'm an expert. Huh? I'm an expert at three yeah. times. Yeah. You know, I wish it it didn't. You know. So. Anyway. Right. I. It's annoying now. It's just if you got something to do and you get it, you're immediately. I better go home and, you know, stay away from the cat or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, so that was that. was that, And, you know, um, then I had some guests come in at the end of the week, and I basically didn't tell them that I had COVID because they would worry, you know. They we said, apparently did you retest quit. yourself to see that it's gone? And I decided not to do that. Only because sometimes you get false positives and so on. Right. Those, home, those home tests are, you know, sometimes I have to go through three of them before they even work. Yeah. You know. Um, and then the three li two lines come up and you go, well, you know, I've got it. Right. You're yeah. pregnant. Here we yeah. go. But, you know, you where you had a problem because of your weight, and they said your lungs couldn't take it, and so on. Right, I had in, in my case. They just say you're an old fart. You're, you know, if you're old, right, you you have a good chance of getting it. Okay. Yeah, well, that's what. If you go to any doctor today and you're over sixty, immediately they go, oh, you're on uh, they go, uh, yeah, maybe you they go. Uh, you got comorbidities, so uh, you know we need to give you a CAT scan or this or that. And it's like, really? You didn't need to give me a CAT scan when I was forty. Now you're going to shove me in a tube or you know poke me somewhere. CAT scans I can do. I can't. I will not do an MRI. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done with the MRIs. I am. That's never happening again. Well, I'm you, done. you know they do have open MRIs. Not for big fat guys, they don't. Well, maybe they don't have MRIs for big fat guys. And they they, they and, don't. And the, they the have, open. I, I'm in the biggest one. I'm in the. I've been in the biggest one in northern Nevada, and I'm telling you, it was not big enough. 
But I saw something the other day on TV. What did they do? Have, they to, have, have to put lard on your sides or something to get you in <laughs> there? You're too, way too close. No, they have them for horses. They have MRI machines for horses. And I said, well, there's my solution. Well, the, the other I, thing is I can't just, I can't do MRIs. I, I'm, this, I, you know. You scare the hell out of you? I know. I have uh, ex, ex, extreme claustrophobia. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the problem with that stupid thing. Now, I can do the C, C, uh, CT scans because you just go through that donut, you know. Right. It, it's yeah, not that's a, nothing. Yeah, that doesn't bother me. It bothers me a little bit when I'm kind of, my head is going past the donut. I may have to yeah. get an MRI for my knee eventually. But they don't yeah. put you all the way in the MRI for that. They just put the lower half of your body in. So I've got a uh, torn rotator cuff here now. Really? I, have well, a I guess for my my years of lifting donuts, I guess. I don't know. It, it's all messed up. Really? I have a, a torn uh, meniscus. Nice. Knee. Yeah. Yeah. It hurts, doesn't it? Oh yeah, constantly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the 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 shoulder thing is excruciatingly painful. Welcome, folks, once again to old people talking about pain. Things we have to do when we're not doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I need a vacation. What? I need a vacation. I see it. Really bad. I see a couple of spots on your picture. You see really? them? You see them? No. Oh, I'm uh, because I'm trying to clean them by. Uh, You're wiping. I my thought face? it was on my on my on my monitor, and it's, there it's food yours. on me. Or, no, it's just know. two dots. People can see them. Two dots. Put put Is your that my glasses. <laughs> no, that's not it. Wait a minute. Maybe that. Wait, take the glasses off a second. I just want to make sure. Oh no, that isn't what it is. Hmm. Hmm. On the camera, maybe? Maybe on your camera. Try cleaning your lens. There you go. Now, let's see. No, they're still there. You may have a couple of pixels missing on your camera. Great. Move your head a little bit and cover the light. Yeah, here, watch. You know what? Let me get rid of that light. I know where that light is. Yeah. We do this all while we're... There we go. Okay. Try that. That's good. That's fine. There we are. I also got a chance to see how fat you are. So, I'm huge. Yeah. Three forty-five. What? Three forty-five. Oh no! I look like a, you know, one of the medicine balls. No, you you look you're kind of three. What is it? Three what? Three forty-five. Three forty-five. You could be one of those guys. You remember those guys in the? Uh, who are the fat guys on motor scooters? Oh, the the the. the the world's fattest twins. Yeah, right. <laughs> and they put them on motor scooters. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're big asses. Yeah, I can't, no matter what I do, whether I ride the bike or walk or whatever it is, I'm still 345. Whether I eat salad every day, no matter what, 345. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, I'm surprised that you don't have other health issues as a result. You know, nothing more than the normal people. Well, you're you're probably the fattest person we've had on this show. Thank God. Well, I'm good for something. I'm well, good for something. We could go on a low carb diet. I've tried. The, really? I tried them all. I, I, said, I did a low I'm carb diet, and I immediately lost. I lost sixty pounds, fifty pounds. Really? Yeah. Yep, and then I got some of it back because I had all this stuff done to the prostate and so on, and the, you know, the radiation right. and so on, and then certain pills they give me for stuff, and it, it put on another, brought back about thirty of those pounds. So, but yeah, I, I'm not, I was taking a pill for a while and it made me lose a whole bunch of weight, and that it was a you know one of those. Not for weight loss. It was a pill for something else, and one of the byproducts was the first six months you take it, you're going to lose a bunch of weight. Wow! And then I gained it right back. Uh, maybe it's time. And I for, didn't change. Maybe anything. it's time for you to do Ozempic. Yeah, I, don't I could be a poster child for Ozempic. Actually, I'm thinking about if I can keep the beard on all year. I'm thinking about being Dirty Santa at Christmas time. 
where you can hire me and I'll go to your local shitty bar and be an asshole. Be an asshole and swear at people. and Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or that might work, I think. Pretend like you're getting drunk. Because you don't, yeah, dr- you don't yeah. drink, really, don't do you? Yeah. So, yeah, it's, you know, I bet I could get 100 an hour for that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm very proud of you. You've managed to keep that weight on. I do. <laughs> I've done what I needed to do. Well, I... I to become I, Santa I would, for a week. I would do everything I could to make you lose it, but, you know. Yeah, you know, it's... Because, I, you know, I've lost, I, a, I've lost enough friends... Yeah, no, I and strangely enough, me too. Yeah. Oh, well, you lost uh, a, you lost a mother and a stepfather father. and a best friend from high school, and that was only over two people. It was, it was exactly <laughs> two people. Yeah. Oh man, it, it and then we lost David B. Edney. Oh yeah, we did. The, David B. Edney. We started a website with David B. Edney called the Surfing Monkey. I think right. one of the first websites ever, right? It, it was. It I mean, was we had very, to be one, very, very we, early. We had to be one of like about the first 10,000 maybe in the world. Yeah, yeah even smaller than that. Probably I, smaller I than think. that. I would be surprised if it was like 5,000. Yeah, we were we were coding that thing by hand, so there were no Oh, I, yeah, I coded thing. a lot of it. I, I learned how to write HTML. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. But it, um, it was about, a good website. But a week and a half, two weeks ago, we lost David. And Jeez. Not good. What he go? What he go from? He was he um didn't wake up one day. Oh really? Yeah. I guess that's the best way to go. Maybe. My mom didn't wake up. She was just there, giving the Hitler salute in bed. Yeah. Very weird. Well. That's, you don't want to walk in and find a parent or anybody dead. You know, it's not like on TV. It's exactly not like on TV. But they look like they're asleep, right? Yeah, she looked fine. With the exception of her hand in that Hitler, Ohio Hitler position. What, is she died like this? <laughs> yeah. Playing flat. In the bed with her arm I a, outstretched. I had a best yellow. friend of mine die in the hospital a couple, many years ago. Uh, my friend Steve Gruberg. And so I immediately oh, rushed yeah. to the hospital to say goodbye, to say, you know, to be with his wife and so on, and, you know, be what, do whatever I could do to be of help. And I nice go into guy. the room that he's in, and they still got him there. And He's lying there like this. Yeah. And yeah, I went, that was my... Uh, I went, doesn't somebody come along and shut his mouth or something, you know? And my stepdad did the same thing. And we're sitting there and looking, you know, I'm sitting there with him, and then he kind of does one thing and he kind of does another thing, and then he's got the eyes open and the mouth open. And it's over. Yeah, but, th- but it was like, it was. It still haunts me to this day. He was just yeah, lying. I, yep. Yeah. Weird. Yeah, I. You know what I thought? I was going to the bathroom today. Congratulations. Yeah. Well. Uh, it, 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 you can go. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, you know, I never could eat chicken skin because if I eat chicken skin, which I, is my favorite part of the chicken, okay. Right. And the next day I have diarrhea. Right. Mm. So in my old age, where constipation happens. What do I use for a laxative? Give me that chicken skin. Nice. But anyway, I'm on the bat. I'm on the toilet. And I'm sitting there thinking, what if I drop dead sitting here? Then I'd be another one of those people, those sad people who die on the toilet. I mean, what? Lenny Bruce died on the toilet. Elvis Presley died on the toilet. Right. I don't know why toilets are. You know, every time you go to take a dump, be careful. You might die. I, well, thinking, pushing, I would hate to drop dead right here and have people come to get me in the bathroom. I mean, I did have an ambulance pick me up once a couple, a couple of years ago because I, I right. fell down, hit my head on the uh, on the uh, sink, and I couldn't get up. I just couldn't get up. 
So they took me to the hospital because I was dizzy and nauseous and everything else. And uh, um, what I suddenly thought, they're coming to get me, and here come the ambulance guys, and I'm lying on the floor of the bathroom. You know, yeah, at least I have me know. fall on a rug or something in the bedroom, right? But there I, I am. Know. The they tell me not to fall at all anymore. My kidney will not take me falling down. Really? No, no. I get, I take a blood thinner. Yeah. Zeroco for all you people. Uh, Zeroco? Yeah, the expensive one. Yeah. And it, I, so I'm right on the edge of bleeding internally at any moment. <laughs> and so if I trip and fall down, it, one of my organs will start bleeding. And maybe it'll stop, and maybe it won't. But if it doesn't, it's a real pain in the Listen, ass. Listen, take care of yourself, will you? I don't want to lose another person. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not riding my bike anymore because of the the. the last please, when I write, down, send you an email or I text you or whatever. Please answer immediately so I know you're alive. Okay. Oh yeah. No. Because well, if I'll I don't hear from you for t- if I don't hear from you for two days or something, I'm going to assume. Yeah. That's what happened with my mom. Yeah. I didn't hear for two days, and then she was gone. Yeah. But now, yeah, I know. I know what you mean. I'm like, I'm like hyper vigilant. I'm you, careful. You found her after two days? Yeah. She must have been pretty ripe by then. No, no, it was cold out there. Oh, okay. So it was like being in a freezer. It's kind of like she was in a little refrigerator. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Uh, to say it, that to it, say that the last month and a half of my between, life has been okay, yeah, yeah, dude, I need to, I need to see a psychiatrist so bad. Yesterday was just horrendous. Why was it horrendous? And you know, well, I had to go talk to lawyers about stuff, and you know, about halfway through the thing, I'm crying, and I'm like, and the guy's like, well, you know, blah blah blah, you know, do, do this, man. and I'm like, dude, everybody's freaking dying around me. And I and I'm grieving really, really hard, but there's no solution. And everybody tells me, "Well, Chuck, you know everybody dies. You know what? Everybody, fuck you." Yeah, everybody Stop dies. That. Everybody dies, and hopefully, or you know, we we hope they had enough friends. There are several people who will mourn that person's passing. Right. Somebody yeah. will be sad that I went somewhere. You know, uh, and, and believe me, when and, you when and, you when you mourn. You're not mourning for the person who's dead. You're mourning for yourself because that yeah, person no, is I, dead. There's no problem. Gino, Gino and I knew each other for 50 years. Vietti and I knew each other for over 50 years. And these guys are gone, and I want to tell them things. I want to call them. I got a, you know something stupid I want to say. And well, I, uh, and, uh, you know, I with my with my friend Shecky. I was friends with him yeah. for 45 years. I suddenly realized it when he died. I mean, 45 yeah. years is a lot of time to know somebody. You yeah. Know? And then to not be able to know somebody. And by the way, that was 45 uninterrupted years. You know, I could say, yeah. I could say with you, well, I've known Chuck for how many years have I known you, Chuck? Yeah. But how many years didn't we talk to each other? Maybe ten. I yeah, guess. with Maybe. with she- Shecky, there wasn't that kind of period of time. There was no period of time I wasn't in touch with him, even when I came to yeah. California. You know? Yeah, Gene and I did everything together for the time he hooked up with my mom till the time he died. We were constantly doing stuff. I mean, I'd be watching some TV and going, "Gee, Shecky would have enjoyed this." Yeah, you know, I own now six tractors, Alex. Six tractors? Dean went one day, goofy as he was, and bought six tractors. And now they're mine. Can you sell them off? I've got to do something. I'm not going to sell them all. I'm going to put one in the front yard. Now, you, now, did your mother leave you some money and stuff? There's crap everywhere, dude. And I got one of her cats. Oh, good. He's rolling around here. Good. She left you something that eats. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can send you out a couple of blouses if you need one, some of those. Oh, okay, sure. Maybe I can give them to Marjorie. Hey, Marjorie, yeah, here, yeah. Here's, a blouse, here's a blouse for uh, Valentine's Day. I got it for you from a dead person. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
look like it was just washed. Everything's great. And, and did your did your did your god uh, did your uh, stepfather or f- best friend whatever did he leave yeah. you anything? There, yeah, I got everything. You got everything. So you got the tractors. Yeah. Is it, is it, and a is motor it, home is, and a motor home and a camp trailer and uh, on the gold wing and uh, yeah. Well, here, yeah, you really my want problem, me riding on the gold wing? My, my problem yeah. is uh, uh, Shecky left me. I would say what you would describe as a shitload of money. Okay. Yeah. But it's in probate because there was so much money that he had that it has to go into probate. So I'm sitting waiting for that to be over with. And I'm going, will I live to see the money? You know? There you go. The whole thing, even having to deal with the whole thing is just yeah. it's horrible. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you're the only one. It's not like... Right, right. I, I am the chosen one to deal with this because I'm the chosen one to deal with it. Yeah, because you have a brother, right? Uh, apparently. What do you mean, apparently? <laughs> For some bizarre reason, he doesn't speak to the family. You know, I've just looked. Yeah. I've just and looked. we don't know why. I've just looked, and we've run out of time, so we have to pursue that in another. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Hope we'll everybody's enjoyed this. this is, we were, we didn't, we got into this depressing a discussion, and Bubbles wasn't even here. You know, oh. so anyway, dude, it's so bad. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Mr. Charles Farnham. Thanks, Chuck. All, on all legal documents everywhere. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that's our old friend Chuck Farnham. Uh, thank you, Chuck. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll uh, have you on in another week or so. I have to call him and do it, but I haven't done it yet. But anyway, how are you, how are you all doing here? Let me just get a few things out of here. I'm trying to clean things up and uh, get uh, the whole uh, shit and caboodle or kitten compute. What what do we call it? Kitten caboodle. Eh, you know, forget it. Anyway, uh, hey, we had the uh, president uh, had his uh, little State of the Union speech. So let me bring in let me bring in the only person that's here tonight. The only person that is in fact here tonight. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's uh... <laughs> oh, this is great. Yeah, yeah. This is what happens is on punishment. Theory. Is this punishment I get for ditching the show last night? No. What what happened? Uh, family discussions. Family discussions. Yes. Was it so... a whole the whole family or just you and the 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 little woman? <laughs> Yeah, I started off as the family, and then it ended up being me and the and yeah. Tiffany. So, so, so in other words, like Adrian was involved in it at one point, and yeah, and then we kicked her out of the room, and then yeah, we had this discussion. Yeah, so, anyways, yeah, and the show is still going on. It was so funny because you guys were still talking, but yeah, then I had to get off. So, well, yeah, anyway, that's that's uh, that's good. You know, one of those things of you know. So is a show more important than me talking to you about this? So <laughs> it's like, hey, no, I understand. You know, I, I get harassed for being on the show, and I'm like, hey, do you understand? It's only one hour for three nights. You make it seem like it's like, oh, you always have to be on the show. I'm like, it's three hours in a week. That, yeah, yeah, it's three hours in a week. Yeah, and the Pam other- doesn't mind, right, Pam? Pam doesn't mind. Pam's a Pam good. Pam doesn't support. mind, right? We go two, three hours with Jeff. Is it okay? Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. I'm out of here. Yes. <laughs> you know, try, trying to get his uh, audio yeah. up is what they consider quality time in their relationship. So. <laughs> <laughs> you make it seem like it's like, oh, you always have to be on the show. Uh, oh, no. It was oh, no. Pam, oh, Pam, we need you. <laughs> Pam, come back. Pam doesn't mind, right, Pam? Pam doesn't mind. Pam's Pam doesn't story. mind, right? We go two, three hours with Jeff. Is it okay? Yeah. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> the last words, I'm out of here. Now you're stuck, Jeff. Wait a minute. Oh. Wait a minute. I think he got it. I got it. Yeah. Got oh, it. yeah. No problem. Enough. Let's give him a big round of applause, everybody. Please, 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 please. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Mm. So, Ooh, look uh, what I got. What? 
You got yeah. an owie? Yeah. What happened? Are you boxing again? Getting a little uh, catheterization. A little what? Catheterization. Catheterization? Oh. You're catheterized? Yeah, I'm what are you some, catheterized uh, for? I'm going, um, I, I did something where I took one of my toes and got it. I don't know. I think it was broken, but I'm not quite sure. But all of a sudden it expanded and it was looking bloody and expanding. And anyway, so I've been getting this uh, medication to kind of fill it out. So I go in once a day. Wait a minute. They inject you for your toe on your wrist? Yeah, they're taking the blood, going oh. through my system, running it. Oh. Mm. For about an hour. Wow. Mm. Okay. You have all the fun, Jeff. Oh, don't worry. I'll probably be joining him starting next week. So yeah, yeah. We'll, you know. we'll let you sit in there. This well, my shoulder sucks. I wake up today and I got vertigo. I'm laying on the bed everywhere I move. I'm like, I get up and yeah, feel better after I get up. So Any, anything wrong with you, Brian? Anything to complain about? Nah. Probably not. At your age. What? How old are you now? You're in your 50s, right? 56. 56. So, five, six, something yeah, like so that. you're on the edge of it, but you're not. You're, you're okay so far. You guys are prepping me for everything. So far, I know about all kinds of colon cancer and you know all these other type of things. So I'm ready. For it. Well, I've now I've had my, now I have my second kind of cancer. So you know I'm like this uh, this cancer mm -hmm. mill right here. Here it is. Right. Wait a minute. What what is your second kind of cancer? I missed leukemia. That. Oh, so it's confirmed. Well, no, but uh, I got a piece of paper here from this. Uh, remember the guy who didn't give me the, you know, the results. You showed it to us well, last night. Yeah. yeah. Well, I went out and got it, and it, it just says it. You know, they did this flow cytometry or whatever it's called, and uh, that's what they do. To they don't do bone marrow uh, anymore. Okay, they just do this, and they can tell what you got. And I've got it, and uh, you know I I have to go see the doctor. I don't know what he's going to tell me he's got to do about it. But how they normally handle it now is it's kind of wait and see. If you don't have symptoms, which I don't have, then mm -hmm. you know, and and a third of the people never get symptoms at all mm -hmm. with this at all. So, uh, what are the symptoms? Uh, doing a talk show. That's one of the symptoms. <laughs> Tired, uh, feeling annoyed and complaining. Mm -hmm. yep. You oh, have none of those symptoms. I'm none of those symptoms. <laughs> no, it's things like uh, 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 profuse night sweats. Uh, you know, uh, what, what was some of the others? Uh, uh, bruising. Uh, I don't I don't bruise very easily. What else? Ex mm -hmm. I can't, I'm trying to remember now. But, you know, so just a whole list of things. And I go down the list. And I don't have it, don't have it, don't have it, don't have it. And if you don't have the symptoms, they don't want to do anything about it because doing things about it may not get you any real relief at the time. In other words, they wait till you start having the symptoms, and then they treat it. And it's getting quite treatable now because they have this whole new classification of medicines that's starting to take care of these sort of things. And I hear that a lot of it, the president mentioned it tonight, it came out of the COVID vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, they've come up with these, all these different medicines now that, uh, that uh, you know, help people live a normal life, normal life expectancy. So, you know, yeah. We'll see. We'll see what happens on Monday. I'm I'm a little apprehensive about it because you know I'm I expect I know what it is probably. I've got paper that says that's what it is. Okay, but you know then I, you go and go. Yeah, well that you have that. But you have something else too. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know. And I wait for that one. Yeah, that shoe to drop. So your guest tonight, Chuck Barnum. Yeah. Him and I weigh close to the same. I weigh three hundred. Mm-hmm. Mm. which is not 345 but it's certainly up there and yeah and he's like and i've done the same but you thing haven't mentioned you're only four feet five oh, so right. you know mm -hmm. it, i'm six foot tall but you know I've, I've i've done the same thing i ate salads with no dressing just squeezed lemon and you don't throw. lose weight and you don't and lose weight i didn't lose weight 
Well, you, I, and since I'm not diabetic or even pre-diabetic, I can't get the uh, weight loss drugs. They're not covered under Medicare. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you're lucky, you'll get diabetes, and then you can get those drugs. I'm 65. I mean, I, I, I'm not even pre-diabetic. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. what's the chance of getting it? You Tom, know, are you the healthy one around here? Looks like it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good night, Tom. And good how, night. How old, how, old are you, how old are you now, Tom? Uh, well, I'm going to be 74 at the end of this month. Really? <clears throat> wow. Yeah. God, I've known you a long time. Yeah. How yeah. long have I known? I knew, we first met up when? Well, I don't know when we first met. I don't know if we first met, but I used to come down to the studio when you were at the Quake and be a part of the studio audience. Yeah. And even before that, I, I started writing letters for your letters segment, and you would read my letters yeah. on the air. Oh, really we got letters. We get letters every, every day. day. Mail, yeah. mail, 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 mail. Da, 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 da. Oh, my God. Yeah. got those stuck in my head from you, Alex. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. You may not be able to hear it because, you know, we may – we maybe screwed up by uh who do you call it by um youtube zoom but let's mm. see here here it is the gutter sluts well that wasn't the gutter sluts that was the actual uh, th letters theme as done by this company that used to do jingles and things like that. Yeah, but that was originally did it was the gutter sluts. But then the gutter sluts made their own version of it for me. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I, 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 well, wait a minute. Was that version the gutter sluts? No. No, well, it sounded different. Well, of course... Yeah, it didn't sound very well coming over over Zoom. Yeah, that yeah, was that was a um, that was a version that was done. We you, you get all, all these different little thing packages. They have all these packages that a station gets, you know, and that was in the package. And I pulled it out because I thought it was the cheesiest letters mm -hmm. jingle I could possibly imagine. And then the gutter sluts made their own version of it, so we started using that one instead mm -hmm. of uh, this one. But that's the original. Oh. Mm. All right. Yeah, yeah, I just remembered the gutter slots. And then they'd end with email because that's when, when when we're going from paper letters to real email. Then the gutter slots added email, right? They Right, yeah. yeah. That's what they said at the last last line was email. Yeah, right. This this was for actual mail. You know. <laughs> so. Anyway. Remember faxes? We used to get jokes through faxes. Oh my god. You know, I, the thing is they still use faxes. Can you believe that? You know, really? like when I had to send my my mm. stuff or have stuff sent over to this doctor from my doctor, he had to send it mm. by fax. Huh. You know, mm -hmm. and then I said, "Well, gee, I'd like to send you some stuff that I have." Blah 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 blah. You know, and uh, they said, uh, "Okay, uh, you, you, you fax it to us." And I went, "No, I can't fax it to you. Do you take email?" He, he said, "Yeah." I said, "I'll make a PDF file out of it. You can have it by email." Mm -hmm. I was glad they were taking email. You know, I, there's some doctors who haven't got up to speed on that one. So, anyway. My first laptop computer had a phone line in it. I could actually send faxes with my computer. Well, I... I really exciting. I, well, I, can send faxes, I can send faxes with my printer. However, I got rid of my uh, phone. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a phone service in here. Uh, so and there's no way that it can send it via your uh, your uh, iPhone. So yeah, that was it, you know. But I can send it by email. I, I make PDF and send you an email of stuff. Yeah, I'll get well, it'll get there just as fast, and probably look better than a, than a fax because they always look chintzy, you know. Mm -hmm. They always look terrible. I understand that uh, Marjorie Trash Can Green interrupted Biden again. Well, we were going to get into that. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I missed most of it. That's that's about the only part that I heard. Uh, that you know, her, her party should tell her to fucking shut up. <laughs> you know, there's a time and a place for everything. And when, when it's when it's Biden's time, let him do his thing. If you don't if you don't like it, don't come to it. 
Okay. Actually, I'm glad she did it. <laughs> I'm glad because because she was really showed up. I mean, this is the second time that this happened. Biden just goes out and he just lures them and they take the bait. <laughs> and they end up looking so stupid. It's amazing. I, I real I was really impressed with this. Well speech. that's that's the current Apparently game plan. The speaker said something to her. What? Apparently the speaker just came across the news, said something to her, Mike Johnson or whatever his name is, said yeah. let's keep let's keep decorum in the in the in while this is going on. So yeah. it's good that her uh, her fellow. Republican well, you know, look, he. Uh, uh, what I would love to do is, I was thinking of actually putting a version of that whole State of the Union address up, but only with uh, Mike Johnson's face, <laughs> because he always looked like somebody had just farted, you know, uh, and, and he was like, uh, he was like, uh, oh, oh my God, I can't believe Biden just said that, you know. And, and, and I mean, I don't think I don't think either of those people should be in back of him, because she stands up and applauds, yeah. and the other yeah. guy's going. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I perhaps she should stay seated as well. You know, and neither of them should react particularly to the speech. Otherwise, don't have them back there. They're distracting. Do you remember when P P Pelosi uh, ripped oh, yeah. up Trump's? Well, after the speech was over, she ripped up the speech, yeah. which was fine. <laughs> oh my God, that was so classic. That's so funny. Yeah, yeah, but um, <laughs> but he looked like he, you know, he he was just he he had a, he had a comment for everything with his face. Yeah. So, um, did he mention anything? Because I I had to leave to get the show ready. Did he mention any, because he was so late getting going, did he mention anything about uh, about uh, uh, Gaza? Oh, yes. yes. What, what, did he, what did he say? I think, well, he, he, he certainly started with saying, I mean, it was Hamas, you know. I, I, I think it was a very, very accurate description of what was going on mm. and very forceful. Uh, he say, you know, he said certainly uh, Israel has the right to defend itself, but you know they need to the the, the, the safety of 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 innocent uh, civilians has to come first. He did acknowledge that 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 Hamas has been sort of like hiding, and it says even like cowards, as he said, yeah. uh, you know, in, in hospitals and such like that. But he says Israel has to do more to protect human life of innocent people. And he announced also that they were going to have a, uh, I think he said a temporary pier that they yeah, were going to be for, for unloading uh, uh, emergency supplies, you know, food, water, medicine. And they were going to, you know, load it on so that, uh, so that, uh, you know, that, well, that people could get. And he says it wasn't going to, he wasn't sending troops. But they were going to send emergency supplies right there at the at the uh, the coast. Well, you know to get what he what he needed to do, I think, was to get up and say, "Listen, you know, Israel has not been been listening to our pleas to save human life there because they don't seem to be working on it very hard, mm -hmm. and we're not going to send any more money over there until you cease the way you've been handling this and start handling this in a more humane fashion." That would have won back all the people that I don't think felt so. alienated I, I think, by him. Yeah, I, I think that you know, I, 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 I think the way he handled it, because because one thing he's trying, he's still working on a ceasefire, and uh, and he's committed. He says, "I'm committed. I'm, I'm we're not going to quit until all those hostages are returned." Well, what happens when the hostages well, his focus are returned? On, on a ceasefire, host, and and so he's certainly they're trying to. Not really piss Israel off. Listen, I got to uh, tell, tell you though, Tom. Uh, you know, we they always do this thing, but assume, we're doing everything we can to get the hostages back. Well, you know something? I don't think that's as important now as saving the lives in Gaza of people who are dying from hunger, from mm. uh, uh, the inability to have good hospital uh, care. Uh, I mean, uh, there have been thirty thousand five hundred mm -hmm. people, I think, killed. Yeah, in, he, in he, Gaza, he acknowledged that. Yes. Yeah, and that is, uh, you know, that is a disproportionate response to twelve hundred people kidnapped or twelve hundred people killed and kidnapped. Uh, you 
yeah. I, I, any death is really all, I, and especially the way that Hamas operated that day. I mean, no, they look they, raping, no, murdering. Nobody, no, nobody, no, there's just I, yeah. I, I can't, yeah. I can't, I can't do that kind of comparison. No, I can do that. It's kind all pretty of comparison. brutal. It's all pretty awful. Well, and, no, and, no, it was it was awful. What Hamas did, and so we we're not talking about Hamas. Hamas isn't getting killed. They haven't gotten that many people from Hamas. They've gotten a lot of people. Well, just men, women, children, old people, so on. I mean, it's been a devast. It's been a literally a holocaust for the people in Gaza. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, uh, I'd like to say that that, that in my opinion, um, uh, Netanyahu's another Hitler, but that would be putting Hitler down. You know, <laughs> I mean, I just think he's been terrible. I think he's been just. The the you the loss of human life has just been tragic, mm -hmm. you know, and it disproportionate. Uh, uh, if you want to go get Hamas and you're going to go kill Hamas, fine, go find Hamas and kill them. It, it, I will not stand in your way. In fact, I'll hold the gun for you while you go to the bathroom. Okay, you know, but uh, please don't say that you killed over three hundred uh, thirty thousand people. And that isn't disproportionate. You know, just it's unreasonable. Just mm -hmm. unreasonable. You know, Biden's not responsible for what another country does. Well, he's responsible, however, when he gives that country a aid and comfort. Okay, then you become a um, um, uh, what do you call it? an accessory yeah, to the yeah, to, right now aid to, and to the Holocaust. Is, what? Right, right now aid and comfort is going to Gaza. They're doing. Drops of food and shipments well, in. And yeah, like but that. you know, it, it's it's too much, too late. We, it, we they should have never. We shouldn't have had to have a reason to drop all those things. I mean, come on, don't tell me that Israel wasn't disrepor disproportionate in their response. And what if they did in the process? The whole world, when this thing originally happened, felt sorry for Israel. Mm -hmm. nope. Now the whole thing is switched. Israel is now an enemy of these people in Gaza. Mm -hmm who are mm -hmm. suffering beyond all measure. It mm -hmm. wasn't a proportionate response, mm -hmm. you know? And, and, and that's what the problem is. But I think the problem that Biden has is a bunch of people who feel that he didn't do what, what he could have done to stop that slaughter by just, you know, thumping on Netanyahu and saying, you want our money? Stop this. You know, you want to go in and get, uh, get Hamas? Go in, find them, and kill them. But don't get a I'm kill. I'm not sure Netanyahu cares about our money. Well, Netanyahu's an asshole. You Him know. and Trump were cut from the same piece of pie. <laughs> All they care about is themselves. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, uh, you know, this was, uh, if, the, if this hadn't happened, he wouldn't be in office right now because he was up on charges for all kinds of things. So, I mm -hmm. mean, it, it, you know, it, it's just it's just been horrible. But the thing is, how does uh, Biden overcome this deficit he has now with people's opinions of his actions vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Gaza because it's not that those people are going to go vote for Trump they're just not going to go vote for Biden they're not going to turn out to vote and you don't want that you need every vote you can get yeah and I, I really think that's that's part of the, the, the speech too I think he was definitely sending the message to disaffected Democrats, especially the ones who voted uh, on non-committed slates in, in the two states that allow that. So I think that was a very part, uh, it was a very political speech, but at the same time, I think it needed to be. It definitely, it, Biden came he? out swinging. I mean, he started with Ukraine. I mean, he just was just nonstop against against the Republicans and their obstruction. How do you think he presented more power to him? I really I really like the speech. Uh, how, yeah, how do you how do you feel he did in maybe convincing people that he isn't a doddering old man? Best that he could do. I mean that's the other thing. At the end of it, he he was even made jokes about it. He says, yeah. Well you know I've been around a while. <laughs> well you know yeah, you, you, you should listen I I actually didn't watch I listened on the radio <clears throat> But yeah, I mean, he was not afraid to to walk right into that, and you know. Yeah, but course, I, I think what his biggest problem is, uh, you know, I'm 84 years old, and you don't hear me stumbling around like that, do you? 
particularly? Nobody no. answered that question. Uh, what, uh, <laughs> no, no, you don't stumble around. Be, no, I mean, I don't think I stumble around, but one of the reasons is I didn't have a stutter as a child. Yeah. But if I did have a stutter as a child, as you get older, those things which you had when you were younger and you got rid of start creeping back. And what people are mistaking for being doddering is stuttering. <laughs> also, mm -hmm. he, he has something wrong with his, with his legs. There's yeah. something like neuropathy or something. Uh, and that doesn't look good either. I mean, it is the optics more than it is the reality. I think he's probably very capable of being president. So he'll probably die on the toilet. Yeah, but, you know, you've got all these assholes out there who, who uh, you know, to begin with, live in a very ageist society, so all of a sudden age has become the issue. No, age shouldn't be the issue. Is he competent to be president? Well, certainly more competent than Trump. Well, you know, Trump is, uh, Trump is only in it for himself. Yeah. You know, One and, thing, huh? yeah. What, yeah, yeah, one thing that I think that that Biden did brilliant, to, to, and he's done this before, to contrast himself with Trump was, is the, the, it's not the age of the person, it's the age of their ideas. Mm -hmm. And he characterizes Trump as someone that's taking us backward, who has old ideas, and he even comes up with, you know, retribution. You know, it's like this grumpy old man that just wants to get even with everybody. And here I am with my platform, and I'm... <laughs> This is this is what I want to do. I want to, you know, ban assault weapons. I want to I want to protect. Uh, I want to reinstate uh, Roe v. Wade and, and, and uh, codify that in law. I mean, on down the line, all these things, you know, a positive platform, and to to contrast with basically mm -hmm. someone who has nothing, nothing but you know, anger and bitterness. Yeah, and I I don't know if it's a stuttering coming back, but you know. He's reading from teleprompter. He's reading a long speech. You know, all these people. There. I mean, I know he's got all the experience and done it so many times before. But I, I don't think it's easy, too, especially when you get older, to be able to be, like, perfectly, you know, walk through that long speech, too. But, yeah, like, like Tom was saying, I think he showed a great sense of humor. He showed, like, he's not, like, in this trance of, of age. He, he's on the ball making jokes, you know, and and rolling with the punches. And he broke away at various times to go, come on, you know it's true, or you didn't, he, you know. Yeah. He yeah. improvised many times. Yeah, yes. I mean, he, yeah. he, I he, 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 he went down. off the teleprompter on yes. many an occasion and seemed quite with it. Yes, you know? I, and I think that's what other people who've been working with him lately have seen and that's why they bring him up saying yeah he's he's on the ball and he he has jokes and he, he's ahead of the thing it's i think yes well he here's what it's all Painful about to watch sometimes Here, but it's here's that's what it's he all is. about they forget one thing comes with age uh -huh. and that's experience mm. you know he's seen it all he's gone through it all he's yes. known how to deal with any number of situations over the years He's been a senator, he's been a vice president, and now he's been, he's president. A fully capable man, you know. That's what people don't understand. They just go, oh, he's just an old man, blah, 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 blah. And that's, uh, that's dismissing him too easily. Mm -hmm. And then the other job he had tonight, I don't know how well he did it, but he certainly attempted at doing it, was saying to people, you know, Basically, I'm not doing as bad a job as you think I am. Mm -hmm. Here are the facts, okay? Right. You know, yep. uh, here are the, the, the uh, here you can see how good I'm doing or bad I'm doing by the measurement of, of the economy and so on and so forth. And I think that's important because what's happened is the other side has started this whole myth about how the economy got worse under Biden. No, it got Crime. better. Crime is, about crime. crime is down since 2000, mm -hmm. precipitously, precipitously. Um, you know, uh, the border situation, um, I, I think it's been handled badly on both sides. Mm -hmm. And for the Republicans to call him out on it is like the pot, pot calling the kettle black. Well, yeah. Biden actually, once again, just ran right into it, addressed it, you know, and and started touting the the, the bipartisan bill that uh, that uh, that was negotiated with conservatives, 
and they did once again take the debate when they when the Republicans started blazing. Oh, you don't like that bill <laughs> that yeah. your your side negotiated with to 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 any law started listing all the the provisions that the bill did to you know get uh, the the process fast and hire more agents. Uh, stop. Yeah, he into, wasn't he he, went, he wasn't afraid to get snarky, right? You no. know, and that's good. No. And I think that's going to be the game plan for the election, and that is they, yeah. they've told him, go after Trump. Catch, yeah. catch him yeah. every way you possibly can, because the more you go after him, yeah. the more upset he's going to get, and the more upset he's going to get, the more he out there he gets, and eventually he's going to make some big mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. And point out that, that Trump was the one that that was calling the Congress, you know, Congress people, and tell them don't don't pass this bill because I want it to be a campaign issue. You know? <laughs> well, they, they they start the Republican side started cheering for something. They're all cheering for something, and he said, "Yeah, you guys are cheering, but then you guys voted against it." You know, oh, that was the <laughs> that was the infrastructure infrastructure yeah, yeah. bill. Yeah, yeah, mm. infrastructure bill. Yeah. But I mean, I think that it, when I saw him take them to the woodshed a couple of times tonight, I went, "Okay, he's showing America he's got it. You know, he's he's sharp. You know, he's got." Uh, and you can show you're sharp by your sense of humor, you know. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but he, you know, he does have a problem reading a speech today because that stutter has come back, you know, and. Um, uh, he, mm -hmm. it, for years, he was able to overcome it because he could watch it, and you know. But as you get older, you know, you become, you become almost a parody of yourself. You know, everything that that's wrong, gets mm -hmm. magnified, and that's what's happened with him so far as age is concerned. But what's also magnified is the skill, and the skill set that he has, a skill set Trump blatantly doesn't have because he never was in that arena getting the skill set. And I think that's something that probably people should go out on the, on the stump and, and push and say, you know, here you've got a seasoned veteran. In Trump, you've got an amateur. You know, and that's, you know, whatever you want to say about Trump, the best thing you can say about him is he's an amateur. You know, because he you certainly- hear the Republican is, response? Hmm? No. Did you hear the Republican? No, response? tell us about the response. Now, here the Republican <laughs> response is Kevin. It was, I was eating my dinner and I almost launched. <laughs> really? Who was who was doing it? Uh, Alabama, Katie. Uh, Katie <laughs> Alabama. I can't remember, but anyone from Alabama shouldn't be. This is in a kitchen, with her shirt open and a cross hanging down. Okay. <laughs> And she sounded like you ever watch that commercial, the one that uh, the the animals are shivering and the ladies talking about only nineteen ninety nine a month and you can help these. <laughs> I don't she, know. My my, uh, my my feeling with those ads is throw the dog a blanket. But anyway, <laughs> she she sounded like that for twenty minutes. I. I I had to leave. My wife told me I'm leave. She said, "Why don't you go up to the show?" And, well, I don't know. Uh, you know, change they, the channel. They always get the big. The, uh, just said she was smiling. She had pretty bright white teeth. She had nice mm -hmm. lipstick. She was very camera happy. Mm -hmm. I mean, very. Did she have cleavage camera. between the cross? No, not that far. Oh, okay. We're talking about you know, but she was in the kitchen and she sat there and everything he said that I heard. I didn't hear the whole speech. She retorted as garbage basically said the country is in terrible shape so and so got raped by the cartel moving the people across the border and she was raped for days and days and days and then the other thing was the, the economy is not what he thinks it is it's not with a big smile on her face and everything he said that I heard she said was yeah. not true period yeah, it was it was insane. I, I yeah, I figured it was a show to be a show. Yeah, Alabama, Georgia, they're close to each other. She probably took. She mentioned Georgia. From Marjorie Trash Can Green. She she mentioned her name was Katie. Short name Katie. I'll look it up and see. But she's probably a center. But I, she did a great acting, great acting. But that's all. Yeah, it was. but uh, but they always get somebody you never heard of to do the response to the president. Yeah, you know, 
And it's like they're, it's, it's their, uh, uh, just somebody they throw out there to be the, uh, you know. Yeah, and she was just pathetic. I mean, seriously pathetic. Mm. Oh, well. Yeah. Well, let's see what the I'm sorry I missed that. That could have been fun. I'm not. <laughs> it, it was it was entertaining for a few minutes, but then the only know, thing that bothered me about about the whole thing tonight is, you know, I I have precious little time before this show starts, so I want that speech to start at nine o'clock. Katie Britt. Yeah. Katie what? Katie Britt. Britt. Okay. Britt. Okay. Britt. B R I T T. Anyway. I wanted that. Th I was hoping the thing would start at nine o'clock. Then I could hear most of the speech. But mm -hmm. no, the president doesn't get there till about twenty minutes after the hour. And I suddenly realized why he was late. He wanted to appeal to the black vote. So that's work. That wasn't very good. I, I got to go. <laughs> Where are you going? Come back. <laughs> no, but you know what? You know what was really, really painful was when he finally did get and By in. the way, if you don't think that's true, we have a very close friend, Marjorie's best friend, and she happens to be of the black persuasion, okay? <laughs> and if you tell her to be here at 2 o'clock, we're lucky if she gets here by 2.30, okay? So, you know, it's it's... Okay. So anyway, so <laughs> when he did get in the chambers, when he when he's like slowly going person by person and people are taking selfies with them, oh my god, it was so painful. I thought people were gonna like keep going, keep going, you know, and he just like went back and forth and chit chatting. I know they always do that, but it just seemed really hey, long. Come in time. the front door, go. I'm late. I better get they up were, there now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keep, keeping him standing up like crowd surfing. <laughs> no, I mean he he was. It's he ten, was getting ten, his balance. Ten, ten yeah, minutes I, to the uh, from to the I podium. Saw, he did a great job, I thought. Good. Yeah, I, thought I, he did I think good. I think overall, uh, I, th I, I I I. How do you think the American public is going to react to that speech, though? Do you think it's going to help him? No, I hope so. <laughs> I think it yeah, should, hurt. but. It should, but the people that you want it to affect won't give a crap. They're going to look at it at like. Yeah, he's just a sleepy Joe. Yeah, and like Tom said, they, they're saying already right out the gate that, oh, it was a very political speech. And I'm like, well, what the hell is this supposed to be? It's not about sports or anything. Yeah. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. most of the time, the, the State of the Union, it's not exactly a political speech, but it is a look what I've done mm -hmm. and justifying right. your job. Mm -hmm. And basically, this was kind of an extension of that, but it was more of a political speech. Very smart. Never mention Trump by name. Right. Mm -hmm. The former <laughs> president. The predecessor. Yeah. Yeah. My she predecessor. Said the, My the predecessor. The deficit is not being uh, controlled. She said that the uh, uh, interest rates are rising so high that no kid in the in her generation, she was noted as the only uh, senator that has kids in school. So that's why they picked her or something. Johnson mm. picked her or some shit. But everything that he said, you know, if he said that the economy was better, she said the economy is tanking. Well, Literally, here's, what, here's tanking. what my theory is. how I, If I were a, a Democrat and, and I was president, how I would get things passed, I would, like be, I would be pro-abortion because then the Republicans would automatically be against abortion. I mean, I would be, a, I, I, say, I'm, I, mean, I would say I'm anti-abortion, excuse me. I'm yeah, anti-abortion, and then they would want to be pro-abortion because they can't agree with me, you know. She mm. mentioned in vitro fertilization and how the Republicans support, in, in, you know, in vitro fertilization. We want every mother to have a beautiful child. Didn't it just happen in Alabama that their Supreme Court voted it down? Okay, here's the thing I'm sick about. As somebody who's never had kids... Never owned a home. Okay. I don't like them trying to always appeal to the people on your children. What will your children? Yeah, well, yes, I mean, that's wonderful. But some of us don't have children. What are you doing for us? You know? I mean, uh, it's always like, uh, uh, do you have children, Alan? Oh, thank God, no. See? Uh, and uh, 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 you do, Tom. That I know. Yeah. Uh, I don't. You're a uh, child. 
Huh? <clears throat> grandchild. Yep. And grandchild. Uh, and you got three, right? Three children. Mm -hmm. And how yeah. many grandchildren? And a whole bunch of grandkids, too. The whole bunch of grandkids. Any great grandchildren yet? No. No. Okay. Well, you'll go get I got there soon. Three and four. My business one, manager one has, uh, I think it's three great grandchildren. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. But mm -hmm. all I'm saying is I get a little tired of that because they never try to appeal to me as a voter. What, what, you know, I don't have any kids and I don't have a house. Now, how are you going to appeal to me? Prescription what, drugs. Prescription <laughs> drugs. <you laughs> <Yeah. do. laughs> You know, I was looking. I was looking at the. I was looking at the price of some of these drugs they use for uh, prescription, uh, for uh, for uh, leukemia, and uh, and they do have them, and they do their job. They're very good, and they're not. They don't make you puke a lot or anything like that. They're really very very expensive. Very, but what ten thousand dollars a month? Now, one of these drugs or a couple of these drugs, however are covered by the new bill, which means that I would not have to pay more than $2,000 a year All right. for yeah. those drugs. And that that's kind of reasonable if you think about it. I mean, it's a lot of How money. much are you paying now? What, for drugs? A year. Yeah, a year. Oh, I don't pay sure. a lot. I, you know, I go through Costco. I don't even use my, my insurance. I have insurance, but I don't use it because I got to do the copay on it. If you add the copay on top of what they're going to charge me for the drugs, it's cheaper for me just to pay full full price at Costco. Uh, so it, it's worked. That's worked. Well, out when my okay mom's me. Uh, was fighting the amyloidosis towards the end of her life, we were fighting over seventeen hundred dollars a pill. Yeah. And how did you get it paid for? Well, we fought it down to eleven $1 hundred dollars a pill. And how often how did she often have to take it? She need them. Uh, she took it once a week, so four times a, a month. Mm -hmm. Jesus. But she didn't get that far because she passed away in, in the process. But, but the fact is that this one of these drugs for the, for the, one of these drugs that, or two of these drugs for leukemia are covered under the new bill that they you know they told them hey no no only two thousand dollars a year nothing more. What new bill? Uh, I can't remember one of the ones he got passed. He, they were, he, they only got about twenty different drugs under this bill. Oh, I know now. I know. Yeah, and he's shooting for like three or four hundred next next round. He, or yeah, but oh, I, I thought Medicare was supposed to save you money. Now that I'm on it, been on it. Well, no, Medicare months. doesn't take care of prescription. No, I have, I have, well, I have an Advantage plan, and it's included. Yeah, that's a gap. Advantage yeah. plan. But, yeah. but you can still go into this donut hole. <laughs> So I got one prescription drug. They're eye drops. They're called Sequas. Oh, Marjorie had a, a, a drops. I can't remember what they're called. And the drops mm -hmm. put her in the donut hole. Oh, they're going to do it to me too. And because About the thing is, you think the donut hole is going to happen because, well, the 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 wholesale price that you're paying uh, with the you know uh, you're paying for the you pay you pay for the drug minus what your prescription plan does or whatever you know, I got no they, bunch, they it's the full price of that drug i got a whole bunch of uh probably six months worth of generic restasis which is one restasis of the, that's that's the one. Oh yeah. god i should send it to you i've been looking for somebody to send it to what kaiser can't take it back and it's not a controlled substance i I doubt they'd do anything to me if they found out. I just ship it. Yes, ship it to me. Marjorie loves her restasis. Oh, and yeah. It, well, it this is a generic restasis, so it's not so expensive, but it, it didn't work as good as the restasis. And I had a choice between the restasis and the sequel, and the sequel works better. So I pay $200 every three months for the copay on the sequel. Yeah. But it's $1,200. For the medicine, so I'll be in that five thousand dollar donut hole in no time. Yeah, well, you see, it's because they base that donut hole on the actual whole uh, retail price of the retail drug. Price. So you can I go, you get a drug like that. Marjorie got that, and she went, "Why did I get in the donut hole? What happened here?" Yeah, and the donut hole isn't just one of the things you get with, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, with, uh, uh, with. Uh, 
I'm trying to think now. Name brand drugs. Yeah, well, it's uh, the donut hole isn't something you just get with your with your. Do her do her things come in containers? Yes, like yes. That? The Advantage plan. Oh, well, I was going to say the Advantage plan. <laughs> oh, because I, uh, I finally found somebody to get send these to, give them to. Yeah, yeah. March would be happy to. Yeah. yeah, they expire, you know, in September, October, November. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. see what I can do. Don't worry, they don't go. They don't go. They suddenly one day it doesn't go bad. They shouldn't be. Yeah. <laughs> These are the generic form of restasis. They shouldn't be that expensive for the donut hole. Yeah, but but it, but the point it, is the point the, is the donut hole is based on the retail price of the drug. I understand that. So but it's let's say you're only, look, well, let's say you're only paying a hundred dollars for the restasis because your prescription company is taking care of the rest. Uh, Once the, you the, get to that hundred and the donut hole on that restasis is how much a month the whole retail? Yeah, eleven, twelve hundred dollars a month. Yeah, three months you're in the donut hole. Absolutely. Yeah. That that drug doesn't work for me very well. The restasis. Yeah. yeah. But well, this drug this drug Anyway, does, these kind of things have to be chemical. taken care of. I mean, come on, you know, like I maybe I might have leukemia and maybe I might need this drug eventually, probably not in the beginning. But if you need to be treated, this is one of the treatment drugs. It, I shouldn't have to, there shouldn't be a price on my life, okay? You know, what happens if I can't afford it? Do I die? Is that it? I guess so. I guess you know, so. do the Republicans well, we want me to die? Well, they probably do, so fuck them, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 If you don't treat the cancer, it'll kill you. I've heard that, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know. But you may not, your cancer may not, it may be like the uh, low-grade prostate cancer. Well, it, 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 what it is is what happens is if you have it uh, and you don't have symptoms, they don't really do anything to treat it. Not they true. just every three months bring in, do blood tests, see if it's changing at all. And if you suddenly get <laughs> symptoms, then they treat it. If you don't get symptoms, then they don't treat it. And a third of the people who have it don't ever have to be treated. So, so you, they die with it instead of. Well, chronic. that's exact. It's like diabetes. You die with it. You don't die from it. But you don't like to hear the word leukemia either. No. <laughs> you know? well, leukemia is cancer of the blood. It's yeah. not a good thing. Yeah, but you know, I mean, when I'm 84, I've well outlived my life expectancy. In fact, I was going to do something today, and then Marjorie said, "Don't do it. That's too depressing." I was on my Facebook page going to list every person I knew in my life who had died. And then I would be at the very end say, and I'm still here, why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because I'm, when I think, I all of a sudden I'm thinking about all the people, like with Richard Lewis dying, mm -hmm. you know, I went, why? You know, all these people are going. And, and when I went back and looked at my life, my ex-wife Ronnie and, uh, you know, and my friend Paul Montgomery years ago and my friend Steve Gruber, and you can go on and on and on, I probably have a list of 100 people that I was personally affected by with dying. The proof being that if you live to be old enough, that's what get, happens when you get old. You have this list of people that are no longer here. <laughs> and if you live to be like 100, there's nobody at all that you know. You know, so we so got to get some younger I people. Take picture, I would take a picture of the top of this medication because it's generic restasis. It's supposed to be exactly the same. You show it to Marjorie. Okay. If, that, if she'll use it, I'll send it to okay, you. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. Okay. You know, it's Maybe. not a controlled substance. I, you know, you're not supposed to give your drugs to other people, but it... No, but it, it's not a controlled substance. They're a lot more touchy about, like, Valium or Norco or something like that. Or, uh, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, yeah. But I, uh, I think that he... I think from what I saw, he did a pretty good job tonight, you know? Yeah. It, it, it wasn't job. It wasn't making any, mis any basic mistakes. Although I went over to Fox oh. to see their take on it. I only lasted about a minute and a half before I had to turn it off. You he know, did it, what he did make he did make one sort of a goof. He says, you know, we talk about you know comparing drug places to other places. I can take you on Air Force One. I can take you to. Uh, yeah. I, know, I can take you. I can take you to Moscow. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess I could take you to Moscow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. No, he you know, did, he, he, other, he 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 screwed up on that one, but then he he 
handled it very well Maybe coming so. back off of it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was talking about going some places and you could get drugs cheaper in all these countries. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And you probably could get them cheaper in Moscow. Yeah. You, know. you can get them cheaper in Canada, Florida, or some, some state approved people to buy drugs through Canada, some state in the South. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, they're allowing it to go through. I, I don't know. <clears throat> I, I thought the FDA had to approve that. Maybe they did. Well, you see, I agree with him and something he said, and I've been saying it for years. These drug companies make a shitload of money. Okay. Mm -hmm. How much of a profit do they need to make? You know, mm -hmm. he said they could take this drug, which was so much, and they could uh, start charging 75 bucks a month for it, and they would still make a crap load of money out of it. Yeah. 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 You know, in now, instead they want to charge the couple of thousand dollars a month or something for it, yeah. and they don't need to do that. And if it's the only drug on the market like that, they've got you by the cojones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, we all have to take a time out to wave at the. Uh, come in, sorry. To, yes, our, our Zoom bomber here. We have to. We have to. Uh, 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 you know. Pay obedience to the princess. Aren't you gonna dance for us? Dance. <laughs> you know something? There... <laughs> I knew that was coming. I was thinking when I watched her dance the other night. I went, you know. The trouble is kids are watching too much TV today, you know, and they see somebody like uh, uh, Christina Aguilera or they see uh, Miley Cyrus or whatever, and she's <laughs> dancing like that. Yeah, but you don't want to see your daughter doing it at eight, you know, <laughs> but they're they're influenced by that. Am I right about that, Brian? Hocus Pocus and she's gone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's good. Did you did you kill her? Uh, <laughs> no, the, the point I'm making, uh, uh, Brian, do, do you find that like her dance moves are a little more, shall we say, provocative than <laughs> when I was eight years old and a girl danced, okay? Because they didn't have TV <laughs> then, and they didn't have MTV, and they didn't have Miley Cyrus and Christina Aguilera and... Working. Huh? And twerking. And twerk. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so all, all, all these little girls are doing all that stuff. And then you see them on the, on the dancing. It's like, oh, my God. Sometimes I'm like, what, what are these kids I doing? mean, she's basically imitating what she sees on television. Yeah, or you uh, TikTok and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not that, uh, you know, I mean, she's still about uh, five, five, six years away from having that sexuality in her that would maybe make her want to dance that way. She's just doing it because that's the way people dance today. Because they think it's funny. All these little girls are doing it, and they, they're laughing while they're doing it. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. 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 But it drives you crazy, right? Yes. Because you're an older person. No twerking zone, please. Yeah, no <laughs> twerking, twerking zone. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, it's... it's um, but um, it must be difficult to be a parent today. It's got to be, a, you know, mm -hmm. between that and the fact that the kids, for a short time, weren't able to go to school, and there's a lot of learning and socialization that they didn't get. You know, is she is she off o over having to do home? You know, being yeah. She that was when uh, she was actually in. Uh, kindergarten and first grade so when everybody's freaking out about oh they're losing two years of their life i said she's just learning colors and shapes so it's no, no big deal yeah for yeah, her. yeah but the big deal is yeah. she was learning socialization right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. A and and she didn't have that lesson yeah on. actually yeah actually when they first <clears throat> went to when they when they closed the schools and they said no we're doing it from home Actually, the first time she cried, she she was watching and all her friends were on on the different screens. And she started crying and she went yeah. off camera because she was so upset that she couldn't be with her friends. She's very, very social. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, but but it, that she has but dance friends. She has she has, you know, school friends. She's just very, very. You know, but I mean, socialization is not something we 
put great value on, but when it's missing, you realize when they don't have it, mm. how bad it is that they don't have it. Yeah. Uh, uh, yep. Really, really sad. But, you know, as a parent, you have to put up with that kind of thing today. And uh, I don't know, you know, when I was a kid, I was a kid. <laughs> I, think the big, I think the biggest problem right now with the kids is the food stuff still. You know, it's still there's so much fast food, dollar menus and all that stuff. You know, that 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 food is just it's just terrible. And, and you see some of the kids in their classes are, you know, overweight already. Jeez, they're only and, in and one of the reasons they one of the reasons they like that crap is because they really <laughs> have not they're, they're they don't have a developed have not developed taste buds. In quite the way that uh, right. they should have, you know. Yeah, yeah, and they're yeah. So, and I think the parents, and not me, parent, but that parent, they cater to kids too much. They, mm -hmm. and, you know, they think that that's the right thing to do. But you know, when I was a boy, and when you guys were kids, your your mom made food, and that's what you ate that night. Yeah. If you didn't like it, you don't eat it, right? Right. Because fast food wasn't around when we were. Kids. And that, and now it's yeah, the I'm... whole thing. Oh, what do you guys want? Oh, I don't like this. I'm allergic to this. I I, I don't like that. I'm like, you I, don't I, like. Yeah. I never said I, I don't like any food. My mom. Well, when eat, I was you know? born in 1939, I'm sure there were, wasn't any fast mm. food. When I was growing up, I think the first time I ever saw fast food was in the early 50s. Mm. when it wasn't really fast food, but you had these places that served quick hamburgers and things like that. Mm -hmm. Then then it became franchises like McDonald's and so on later on. But still, there were these... There was, there was a whole series of uh, ice cream places called Foster's Freeze mm -hmm. when I was like 11, 12 years old. You know, it was a softy ice cream place. Yeah, but they still, they had real hamburger meat and it wasn't with fillers and stuff like that. And they were cooking it on the grill right there. I mean, it's different than it is today, too. So. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't, uh, you know, yeah. quickie just, food. Just when she wants something to eat like that, just show her a picture of me and say, this is what happens to you when you eat quick you know, food. I make it. her go to the dentist with me when I've had some implants and stuff like that. Yeah, I've, I made her watch that. I said, this is what happens when I'm in here for an hour. This is what happens when you eat too many sweets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, well, she looks, she doesn't look like she has a weight problem. Yeah. Uh, so my father had a big belly, and then I sort of do, but I can control it, but I'm just some lazy sometimes. And so she has sort of my body a little bit. So that's, that's why, and, you know, it's usually kids that are a little bit chubby. When they have their growth spurt, they lose that. Like Simon was chubby, and then he got a growth spurt, and he's so skinny now. Yeah. But the whole thing is, she's growth spurting now as she's getting, you know, mm -hmm. as she's young. So it's not like she's going to have this growth spurt and get skinny. So, I, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So I have been strict with her lately yeah. now. It's like, yeah. How was it with you, Tom, raising kids? <laughs> oh, boy. I've already, I, I don't know. It, it, it's. It ain't I, easy. I, I tried my best. That's all I can say. <laughs> you tried your best. That's it. That's exactly yep. it. You know, that's all you can do. You know. And then one day you look at them and go, well, if they're happy, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So anyway, the theme is playing, and uh, so that means the show will be over in two minutes. And Amy's back. Hmm? What? Amy is back. Amy's back. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, really? Okay. I uh, still won't call in. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know you don't call it that show, but she uh, she's back, and that's good. You know, she uh, she was out uh, uh, doing the polls, doing exactly what uh, our good friend working the polls uh, with Kevin. Uh, Kevin was doing in his yeah. neck of the woods. So, you know, yeah. I appreciate people who do that. Yeah. Thank you for your service, Kevin. Yes, thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, with all those horror stories. Hey, Tom, Tommy, you were sending emails, Texas, to everybody, huh? What's Text, that? You're texting? Uh, oh, I was, no, I was. I was actually. I did send postcards to the um, uh, North Carolina for, as a part of the Environmental Voter Project. Yeah. Hey, and, and listen, so we, we had a postcard party. We got to go though. Uh, thanks um, to Brian and thanks to uh, Alan. Mm. I'm drinking your coffee again tonight. Uh, thanks very much to Tom. Any call anytime, Tom. We love seeing you. 
Uh, we know when your face is there, it's going to be better than usual show. Jeff Stein, thank you, and thank you, Kevin, everybody. Mm -hmm. Give a big wave goodbye, and I will give, oops, let me move my mic here. Give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. Wait a minute, I got to get me on here before they completely leave. Okay, there they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Amy Manuel is next with the intersection. Uh, she'll be taking your calls at on uh, um, Skype at uh, GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Night, everybody.